Hi, my name is Alex and this is The English in Ear, where we look into what people say in English and why they say it. This week, we're going to start a series of videos looking at the armed forces, particularly the army this week. I may also sprinkle in a number of other words and expressions that are associated to the military. In Britain, there are three branches of the armed forces. The Army, the Royal Navy, which includes the Royal Marines, and the Royal Air Force. On the American side, there is the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and of course, Space Force. Other countries have their own structures, but these are the ones that we will be looking at in this series. The Army. I thought every country would have its own army, but it turns out that there are over 20 countries in the world that do not. Now, normally these are smaller states like Panama and Costa Rica, so it kind of makes sense. Others, like the Cook Islands and the Cayman Islands, have an agreement with New Zealand and the UK, respectively, for their defence. The British, American, Canadian, Australian, uh, etc. armies have quite a history and, like any organisation, they have a hierarchy, different ranks within their organisation, usually divided between commissioned and non-commissioned ranks. Originally, a commission meant that the monarch or the ruler had given the pers person a position whereas a non-commissioned person, it was generally the lower ranks, were given their position from within the organization, private. These were originally called private soldiers or those who joined, sometimes forced to join the army and were the lowest rank. The name differentiated them from mercenaries. Side note, the word mercenary comes from the Latin merces, meaning to pay or to reward, and from which we also get the words merchant, market, and even mercy. Mercenaries usually referred to soldiers who served in foreign armies, lance corporal and corporal. The lance corporal, illustrated by having one stripe on their sleeve, is the first level of non-commissioned officers. The word corporal, the rank with two stripes, come from the Italian capo corporale, meaning the leader of a body, as this was the first rank to lead a group of men. The lance part of lance corporal comes from lancia spezzata, meaning a person who had broken a spear or a lance, denoting their experience in battle. The stripe on the sleeve is also called a chevron, a French word meaning a rafter of a roof. And for those who really want to see some weird lexical connections, it's also linked to the French word for a goat, chevre. But I don't want to bore you with, you know, all those details. Sergeant. Now, I know a lot of sergeants aren't going to like this, but their rank comes from the French sergeant, from the Latin servientum, meaning servant. Now, originally, this would refer to a servant in a nobleman's household and uh, those who would go to war and battle with him and serve him there. So it would have been a trusted and high-ranking servant. But why do we pronounce it sergeant if it is spelt sergeant? Well, that's a long and complicated answer for another day. Let's just admit that English spelling and pronunciation are crazy. Now we come to the commissioned officers to whom the lower ranks must salute. The word salute means to greet or to pay respects to, and literally means to wish somebody good health or safety. The origin of the gesture of raising the right hand has a number of mythical or legendary explanations. One is that the right hand being traditionally the hand that held the weapon would be raised to show that there was no intention to fight. Another idea came from the era of jousting, 
where knights at opposite ends would raise their visor to show that they were, in fact, the noblemen on the list. Another and more romantic and probably therefore less believable theory is that the knight would shade his eyes from the dazzling beauty of some noble lady who was watching the competition. The final and the most likely explanation is that when junior ranks would encounter their officers, they would remove their hats as a sign of respect. As hats became heavier or more bulky, this transformed into a simpler gesture. Lieutenant. Lieu in French means place and tenez means to hold. So essentially, it means that you are, as the lieutenant, holding the place or substituting the captain or the higher rank. In British English, it's pronounced lieutenant for some reason, even though it is spelt the same. What? I hear you cry. That's crazy. Yeah, I know, I know. However, there is a reasonable explanation. In Old French, it's possible that the lieu was spelt l'ef. So it became lieutenant, captain. This comes from the Latin capitaneus, meaning a leader or the head of something. It comes from the Latin caput, meaning head, from which we derive other words like capital, capital, capitalism, chapter, and strangely enough, cabbage. Major. This is an easy one to explain. It comes to English from the Latin magnus via the French major, meaning great. In this case, it refers to an older, more experienced person. Colonel. The word colonel here is linked to the word column. In the military sense, it would refer to the person at the head of a column of soldiers or a regiment. Now, why is it pronounced colonel? Well, very often this was a sort of misspelling, and in uh, Italian or some language it would be coronel, like in Portuguese. So it became colonel. Brigadier. A brigadier is someone in charge of a brigade, obviously. This would consist of between 3,000 and 5,000 troops. Brigade probably comes from the Italian brigade, meaning to fight or to argue. General. This is a shortening of the French term capitaine général, meaning the leader of the whole army. Field marshal. The word marshal originally referred to someone who took care of horses. The word mare from Old French is still used today, meaning a female horse. It became used for a person who would marshal or call up the troops and organize them, and was later for the supreme head of an army during wartime, at least in some European armies. The Americans alternatively have generals who have uh, ranks that increase from one to five stars. Well, I hope that was interesting. If you enjoyed it, please uh, give us a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.